Good morning, congregation. It's always a blessing to stand before the heaven and God's children to present uh, another lesson from the living word, God. We want to continue my lesson uh, from my last uh, message. We want to continue this. So, you know, God, our Father, has been working from the beginning, like I said in my last lesson, with recovering of man. You know, God called Adam. Where are you? Because Adam had disobeyed the command. God called Abraham, Noah. I mean, he has been working. He has spoken to us through the prophets, through our fathers. He has spoken to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom he created all things and the work of the Holy Spirit. When we think about our Lord and all that he is doing in our lives, we must understand what are we here for? Because God is doing an incentrical type work. He is working on the inside, the interior of man. While Satan is dealing with things on the outside, trying to entice us, but there are some things that we need to understand about how he leads us astray. And in our lesson, in Matthew chapter 15, in verse 10, where Jesus was speaking to uh, the disciples and also to the Pharisees, and, and he called the multitude as he still calls us today through his gospel. See, Jesus was in opposition to the doctrines of the Pharisees. Why? The Savior took uh, this occasion to show them that the great source of pollution was the heart. It wasn't so much as eating with unwashed hands. That wasn't the issue there. When the Pharisees came to him from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples uh, transgress the traditions of the elders? And Jesus said, let me ask you something. Why do you transgress the commands of our Father, our God, to make void his commandments? Why do you do that? You see, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defile a man, but that which comes out to eat with unwashed hands does not defile you. Switch the screen for me. So, they suppose that external things chiefly defile the man. We're talking about things that need to change. We need to change. The people of the world need to change. We have so much murder and, and killing in this generation of people who have no concern for life. So on this, all their doctrines about purification were founded. This opinion of the Jews, it was of great importance to correct. There are some things that we have to correct when it comes to the doctrine of Christ. The Savior took the occasion, therefore, to direct the people to the true source of defilement. And that is, and that was, and still is today, our own hearts is what defiles us. 
he particularly directed them to it as of importance, just as he said, hear and understand. You see, understanding and wisdom are chief principles that we need in our life today. What is wisdom? How do we obtain wisdom? Well, wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And understanding is to understand that you need to turn from evil. This is understanding. Next screen. So change. Jesus is working on our inner being. He is within us, within our soul, you see. Satan comes in and corrupts the flesh. How do people deal with change? How do people deal with change? First of all, let's look at some things that is going on in the hearts of man, according to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick or wicked, corruptible. Who can understand it? Well, verse 10 says, I, the Lord searches the heart and tests the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deed. You see, one thing about the children of God, we know that we are going to be tested. That way, we place our faith in the Lord that he is going to see us through and bring us out on the other side. That's why the verse, a couple verses before uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, I think it's verse 6 or 7. One of those verses speaks about, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bring forth his fruit in his season. So it does not matter what comes his way, whether it be famine, drought, he, whatever it is, he's planted by the rivers of water. We are planted by the rivers of water. We are going to be ready for whatever comes our way. So the heart is desperately sick. It's incurable. Man put their trust in their own selves and they are sick. We're, looking, we're seeing the effects of sickness in the world today. When a guy step on another guy's foot at the park, next thing you know, he pulls out a gun and shoot him. That's sick, right? We need to reach these individuals some kind of way. I moved to Pittsburgh. I went to get some gas one day, and a guy come up to me and say, uh, do you have some money? I said, let me ask you a question. See, I learned from my Lord. When they ask me a question, I turn around and ask them a question right back. We got to start doing that. Ask them a question right back. Why are you in this condition that you are in? He said, because I have mental health issues. I said, oh, okay, so we'll give you something to eat. Sick. Right? John chapter 2 and 23, when Jesus was invited to the, the wedding, all those that seen what he had done, the ones that was dealing with the water that was turned to wine and so forth. In verse 23, oh, to them, I think my mic went out. Anyway, because Jesus on his part did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people. He knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man for he himself knew what was in man. He takes it all the way back to the Garden of Eden. I know what's in you. you. You ate from the tree, which was told you not to eat from. And so now that which is in you, you see, God is wise, very infinitely wise. So when Satan uh, deceived the woman into eating the fruit, Boom, now Satan is in the flesh. 
That's right where the Lord wanted him, right there. So when Jesus came in the flesh, but not of sinful flesh, he trapped man in the flesh, and he took that man to the cross and crucified him. That's how the Lord in, uh, I believe it's Colossians chapter 2, where he disarmed the principalities and rulers and all of that, around about the 14th, 16th verse. It's been a while since I've read that. But they rejoiced when they seen that. We should rejoice in the fact that God is doing a mighty work in our lives to change us into the image of his glorious son. Next screen. Paul says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh because it's corrupted in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Right? For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. We may be struggling with some sin in our life that we just can't get rid of. God put that thorn there for you, for you to deal with, for me to deal with, so that we can see the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. I need to do something with this sin. This person that's in me. Next screen. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. So, let me get this right. I seem to be having some uh, difficulties here this morning. But we're going to work through it. So, in verses, Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander, and many other things comes out of the heart. The heart is the intellect of all learning. It is the first on the list, the heart. Within the heart is the mind, your emotion, where you love and you hate, and you have all that uh, racist stuff in you prejudiceness in you, that's in your heart, that's in your emotion. But your will, you see, your will is where you get your preference and your, your desire to choose. That's where the will at. And it is not God's will for any man to perish, but that all should come to repentance at one point in time in the creation it was only one will. And that was the will of the Father. Till Satan rebelled. Now you have these other wills in effect. And so it is today when Jesus said, I did not come to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus had a will also. God desires to change people on the inside he is doing a work on the inside of us that's what we must understand next clip we work hard to keep our outward appearance attractive we want to make sure we don't have no slob on the side of our mouth or booger hanging out our nose or sleep in our eye wake up man get the sleep out your eye 
I comb your head or something. You see, I wear my cap because it keeps my little twiglets from flying all over the place. Right. So we want to look attractive. But what is in our hearts is even more important. That's key. You can look as pretty and as handsome as you want. When you live a life separated from Christ, you will be pretty and handsome in a lake. The way we are depend deep down where others can't see matters much to the Father. Next clip. Matters much to the Father. What are you like on the inside? Are you filled with hatred, envy, jealousy? What are we like? Who are we supposed to be representing? We have a monumental task on our hands to reach people that are in need. When people come, become Christians, God makes them different on the inside. Are you still the same way that you were when you got baptized up until this point? See? He's doing a work, as in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 5 and 6 tell us. The work that he starts, he's going to complete it next. He will continue the process of change inside of us if we only do what? Ask and allow him. Say, Lord, you got, you got to help me with this. You got to help me change. You got to make me fit for the kingdom. Help me. And guess what? The Lord is going to help you. God wants us to seek healthy thoughts and motives. You see, because he knows, you know, he knows the motives behind everything that we do. Not just healthy foods and uh, healthy bodies, you know, over there in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, I think the scripture says, for bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. So yes, health does matter. We don't want to eat Jack in a Box and McDonald's uh, 30 days out of the month because something's going to happen to you. See, so healthy foods and good exercise, that's all good, but we, we're headed toward godliness. Next, next clip. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. As you can see, the thought behind all of this, I have my verses there, 11 through 21. If we read all those verses on each one of my headings, We'll be here for about two or three hours. I know y'all don't got nothing else to do the rest of the day. You know, back in Paul's time, Paul preached for so long until a young man fell down and, and died. And Paul had to go and revive him. Who was that? Azariah? Ez, Ez, Ezekiah? One of those guys under the Old Testament. Nehemiah? Ezra? They read the book all day long. So it's about what do we want? So God's changes are complete. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Says Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Next clip. Christians are brand new people on the inside. See, you got to remember. It's not what goes into a man that defile a man, but it's that which comes out. So what God is doing, he is saying, okay, you need to show that you have changed on the inside. Next clip. The Holy Spirit gives us new life and we are not the same anymore. We are not the same anymore. We have things that we have to work on in our lives every day. We are not reformed. We are not rehabilitated. We are not 
re-educated, we are recreated. Striving for the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. New creations. Living in a vital union with Christ where we draw all of our nutrients that we need as plants do from good soil. Next. So, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, so conduct yourselves as children of the kingdom, watching and waiting on the Lord, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. We should always be thankful no matter what we are going through because it's all not going to be all peaches and cream. We're going to have to go through some, some things. In conversions, we are not merely turning over a new leaf. We are beginning a new life under a new master. See, we once was under that other guy. That other master who rules the dark side wants to destroy everything that's righteous in our lives. Next clip. And do not presume to say, as we see in Matthew chapter 3, uh, my key verses, verse 9, we can read 1 through 12, but we, the time where Paul was talking to the Pharisees and when they were coming to him to be, not Paul, uh, John. They were coming to him to be baptized. John says to him, you vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And so he says, and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. You need to bring forth some fruit that shows that you are. Inward change should lead to outward changes. We should not be the same as we were in the beginning of our walk. Next clip. John the Baptist called the people out to more than just words and ritual performance. He told them to change your behavior that's key we need to change our behavior right god looks beyond our words and religious activities to see if our actions back up what we say and he judges our words by the actions that accompany them you got to pray you got to ask the lord to help you on your way on your journey next Do your actions match your words? We have some work we have to do. We, we have a lot of work we have to do. Next clip. Just as fruit trees is expected to bear fruit, God's people should produce a crop of what? Good deeds. Deeds. That's what we need to be doing. Good deeds. God has no use for people who call themselves Christians <coughs> and do nothing about it. You call yourself a Christian, but you don't do nothing about it. <clears throat> like many people in John's day who were God's people in name only. We are of no value if we are Christians in name only. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You know, I was walking last night and I heard some music playing. I say, I understand why you put me where you put me at now, Lord. I'm surrounded by a Cathedral of Faith here, Pentecostal. I'm surrounded by Cathedral of Faith, Pentecostal. They got this other little uh, congregation church. So I walk past it and I stop and I'm listening. One of the Clark sisters over there in Pittsburgh singing. They got everything set up pretty. I said, ooh, this is pretty. I walk up, 
and they noticed me standing there. Say, hey, brother, come on up here. You the one? Because I went, I heard them singing, and I went in there, and I was watching them singing and everything. I said, okay. So they remembered me. So they invited me up. You want some food? Nah, I don't want some food. I just got to eat some shrimp and french fries, right? <laughs> Give me some water if you got some water. So the guy gives me some water. So I'm standing up there. I said, uh, so what's the name of this congregation? He says, this is a cathedral of faith. Uh, we Pentecostal. I said, oh. I said, oh. I said, it's a Pentecostal right on the corner right there, right down the street from y'all. Oh, no, no, no. We ain't the same. We ain't the same. I said, wait a minute. But y'all both wear the same name. I said, how, how is that? He says, well, brother, I, can, I can't explain that to you. He said, why don't you come on by tomorrow? I said, no, I got to go up to San Jose. I got to preach. Oh, you, oh, you preach? Oh, well, maybe you can tell me the difference. I said, no, 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 I can't tell you nothing. You need to find out for yourself. He said, you know what? I, I, I'm going to find out because I'm a deacon. I should be here. You understand why you a deacon? I said, let me tell you this. I'm going to leave you with this because this conversation, God is hearing this. I said, every, Jesus told him the same thing right here in, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 15. Every plant which my heavenly father had not planted shall be rooted up. I said, I'll leave you with that. And I walked on about my business. Okay. So what do we have? If others can't see our faith in the way we treat them, we may not be God's people at all. Next clip. We just may not be God's people at all. You know, in Luke, yet wisdom is justified by all her children. Next slide. People are open to change when they stop rationalizing. We need to stop rationalizing and understand what we need to do in the kingdom of God. Next clip. Wisdom's children are the followers of John and Jesus. Are you a follower of Jesus? Then you are a child of wisdom because you have decided that I'm going to follow the Lord. Next clip. The followers lived changed lives. Can you say that today about yourself, that your life has changed? Next clip. Their righteous living demonstrated the wisdom that Jesus and John taught. You see, in the book of Acts, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, and all of them took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. See, can people look at you and say that you have been with Jesus? The Pharisees, on the other hand, were good at rationalizing their inconsistency. A lot of inconsistency. Whole bunch. Next clip. This helps them. Keep up a good appearance. They always want the best seats. They always want to look the best in their long robes and everything else. So, but it is. Okay, we went, we went ahead. There we go. But also keep them from changing where change needs to be made. See, with the inconsistencies that they have, it kept them from changing where change need to be made. Next clip. If we excuse our wrong actions or inconsistent attitudes, we will strengthen them. We'll only get further away from the change that God wants us to have. Next clip. If we face up to our inconsistencies, then we will grow in wisdom. That is understanding that wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That is the beginning of wisdom, is the fear of the Lord. Jesus was saying that if the Pharisees were really wise, the people would be able to see it by their consistent behavior. That's what people look at today. When you are in the world, when you are at work, wherever you are, people are watching you. 
watching everything you do. Next clip. And the situation dealing with the woman who was caught in adultery. Jesus stood up and said to her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. You see, the Pharisees, they, they, they lived strict lives where people could not live under that. Neither could they. Next clip. The starting point of change is repentance. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that the sins may be washed away. For when the time of, uh, of uh, reparation should come from the Lord, according to Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Next clip. When Jesus said that only someone who had not sinned should throw the first stone, the leaders, what they do, they slipped away quietly, hold it to the young. Walk away. Throw the first stone if you don't got no sin. If you walk away. Yeah, get it right. Get it right. Next clip. Evidently, the older men were more aware of their sins than the younger. Younger people live today as if they could just live any kind of way they want to. I don't say nothing to them. Leave them alone. You did it. You used to live like that. That's what they say. Leave them alone. Let them live. Yeah, okay. Is that what you want? Next clip. So whatever age, whatever your age is, we need to take an honest look at our lives. It doesn't matter your age. You need to take an honest look at your life. Next clip. We need to recognize our own sinful nature. We need to recognize the problems in our own lives and get that straight. And then look for ways to help others rather than hurt them. Next one. Jesus didn't condemn the woman accused of adultery, but neither did he condone her sinning. What did he tell her? Next clip. He told her to leave her life of sin. That's what he told her. Leave the life of sin. Next clip. Jesus stands ready to forgive sin in our life, but confession and repentance mean a change of heart. Goes back to the heart. Not what comes out of a man that defiles a man. I mean, not what goes into a man that defileth the man, but what comes out. So we want to work on the heart. With God's help, we can accept Christ's forgiveness and stop our wrongdoing. I want to thank you for uh, your attention today and uh, the elders and the deacons and the congregation here for giving me the opportunity to come here and share a portion of the eternal word of God. If you stand in need of prayer, we can pray for you. If there's anyone who would like to become a member of the body of Christ, we can help you in that respect because we have water. So if there's nothing else, let us Prepare our hearts to sing the song that has been selected in our hearing.